Folks, welcome back for the return of As Goes Israel. Of course, you know the rest of that phrase. As Goes Israel, so goes the world. None other than the very beloved Avi Lipkin. How you doing, Avi? I'm in Oklahoma, so I'm okay. You're okay. I, yeah. I grew up. I grew up in Oklahoma City, and so I know you're okay. I'm thrilled about these places you're speaking right now. As of this recording, you're coming to me from Edmond, Oklahoma. Boy, I used to run streets in Edmond too, and uh, I'm glad the churches are wanting to hear about what you're you're talking about. Which in this case, uh, you're going to be talking about jihad, or as like Avi Lipkin likes to say. Jihad, right? Is that, that, that how they say it in Texas? Or no, you said it wrong. It's jihad. <laughs> For those who are just now meeting Avi, he's the founder of the Bible Block Party in Israel, and uh, one of the one. Of the, well, he's the only of his kind, but they're in Israel. You know uh, who who is fighting the far left? Uh, you know people. Well, it's people like Avi. He's right there on the forefront, and he's never given up. He's always there. Uh, you know, standing for uh, the, the the beliefs and the uh, the morality and the conservative uh, stance of those who are in Israel. You know, don't don't believe your news, folks. Uh, you can't trust your news when it comes to Israel. There's a lot of things going on that you don't know about. But hopefully, we'll shed some light on that. But first, Avi, uh, I know that you're in Oklahoma, uh, uh, in the area. You're in Edmond as of this taping. Would you catch us up what's happening in Israel right now? Okay, well, uh, I just arrived uh, in the United States a week ago, and um, but I'm let me tell you, I'm plugged into the news all the time in Israel, mm -hmm. and I'm following the demonstrations, the left-wing demonstrations against the government. And, you know, I have to tell you, the Jewish population is over 7 million in Israel, and uh, they have these mass demonstrations uh, which are about 40, 50,000 people. But you know what? 40, 50,000 people wow. is nothing when over two and a half million people voted for Netanyahu. And so there are a lot of conservatives in Israel who just, you know, they're quiet, they're biding their time, let these uh, demonstrations blow off, you know, and blow over. And uh, But today was a, a good day because the uh, electoral reform bill passed the first reading. It still has two more readings. And, uh, you know, the government is open to talking to the opposition, to the left-wing opposition, but uh, they don't like the idea of giving up the Stalinist-led uh, Supreme Court. And um, I, I don't know if I told you on your shows in the past, but, you know, like I was fired from the prime minister's office in 1990. That's actually what got me started going to speak in churches because I was wow. fired from the prime minister's office by left wing uh, bureaucrats uh, who said, we know your views, you're fired, and we will make sure to it that you never get a job again in Israel. So, wow. so that's one of the reasons why I founded the Judeo-Christian Bible Block Party, because I'm going to create my own job in our parliament. Um, another thing, I was court-martialed after the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin while I was acting rabbi in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, but there were communist uh, denouncers in Williamsport who called my commanders in the army and said, I was with the group that killed Robin. <laughs> I, was, wow. I, I was a community rabbi in Pennsylvania for 90 days. Um, so it was all false denunciation. And I was vindicated eventually, but the army in Israel is controlled by the left and the police is controlled by the left and the foreign ministry is controlled by the left. So there's so many different aspects of life in Israel that are still solidly in the hands of the communists and socialists. And people like us who are, you know, Western thinking, you know, we are not very popular. Right. We, which is amazing to me. I mean, given history, of course, you know, folks, uh, we were seeing history repeat itself. We, we used to be so critical of the Germans. And now Americans are just sitting by and watching the same thing happen over here. Avi, you know, can these people be reasoned with? I mean, can 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 you just simply point to history and, and show them that communism has never worked in any scenario, in any capacity in the world? Well, uh, the point is this. Um, and, you know, I've been in Israel 54 years. Right. And if you look, if you go to the computer and you type in the word Knesset, K-N-E-S-S-E-T, 
Mm -hmm. and you look at the 25 elections that we have had in Israel, you see a steady decline in votes for the left-wing parties, and you see a steady increase in the right-wing nationalist and religious uh, party. And the problem is that the left-wing people who have been controlling all the arms uh, of the government uh, do not like it that the people are voting more and more and more against them. And so what's happening now in the Knesset is merely an expression of the will of the majority. And uh, so now they're saying, oh, what about the rights of the minority? You know, democracy is, you have to respect the rights of the, of the minority. But you don't have to tell you, when I was fired from the prime minister's office, nobody spoke about the minority. Uh, you know, I was fired illegally. Uh, I was court-martialed illegally. And then when I studied to be a rabbi, I was kicked out because I opposed homosexual ordination. And uh, supposedly that's a capital offense in the Bible. I mean, I don't say kill the homosexuals, but I, I don't think that a rabbi or a priest or a pastor uh, should be a homosexual. They can believe what they want and live as they want. But to be a man of God, a man of the Bible, you have to follow the Bible. But, you know, I don't have to tell you in these days, good is bad and bad is good. Right. You know, I find it interesting, Avi, that that the, the Muslim population can throw homosexuals off roofs. And that's okay. They don't say anything about that. They're afraid of them, you know. But you don't see uh, uh, transgender or homosexual uh, clients going to a Muslim bakery and demanding to have a gay cake or, or whatever. You don't see that. It's only towards those with judeo-christian values and that is discrimination but you know no one's more concerned about the minorities but the left until the majority than when conservatives whom they think is the minority all of a sudden they don't have rights you know just like here in america who's controlling the money who's controlling the arms of the government well it's safe to say it's the left you know it's a big game over here it's a joke you know and uh, I'm amazed at people who vote, vote for the slave masters. You know, I've done a lot of work in inner city. I've done a lot of work with different people groups uh, who've been victimized by leftist ideology, yet they vote for them. And uh, this racial, racial propagated racial war that, that Soros is well-funding the media to propagate, you know, uh, that's the goal is, is to distract us. Now it's UFOs and, you know, uh, trains derailing that are carrying chemicals that were banned, you know, in the 70s. And gosh, the list goes on and on. It, it sounds like a sci-fi conspiracy channel until you just watch the news and find out a lot of those theories are, are turning true. But the leftist ideology is consistent. They are united. They may devour themselves and each other, but, each other, but they're definitely more united than the conservatives that either think they're too busy working a job or or too busy on TikTok or escaping their lives to actually take action. But people like you take action, Avi. You know, you've been traveling the country uh, for years, in, in addition to your work in Israel, making people aware. The threat of jihad is very, very real. Even this last New Year's Eve, there was a new Al-Qaeda uh, air threat, terror threat. What did Biden do? He sent 200 air marshals to the southern border to be Uber drivers and babysitters of these beloved illegals whom they give 3,500 bucks a month and all the health care in the world and no recommendation, by the way, for the jab. So uh, very easy to see, you know, who's running the show, who's steering the bus. But Avi, are you finding that Americans might be surprised to realize that, that uh, they are the majority, those who don't go for this drag queen story hour, they don't go for this communism, socialism. If, if the more, majority of Americans have conservative views or, or, or starting to vote conservative, like the majority of, of Israelis, um, why aren't they doing it? Well, I think one of the problems is that uh, flipping the election results each time. And so even if the conservatives are the majority, uh, if the people who control the, uh, the computers flip the results, then the left stays in power. You know, Stalin, Joseph Stalin used to say, it doesn't matter who votes. It matters who controls, who does the counting. Counts the votes. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, here you are. You're about to, uh, you're about to speak at this church about jihad. Um, in my mind, it's hard to imagine anyone who doesn't know what jihad is. I mean, I was a counterterrorism reporter, you know, in 2010 uh, when ISNA, part of CARE, Part of the Muslim Brotherhood was uh, the consultants to Obiden. 
I'm sorry, Obama. Right. Oh, Biden is who is in now. <laughs> but but you know what what are some reactions you get when you tell them the true aim of of uh, radical Islam? Well, firstly, I have to tell you that usually uh, pastors who invite me are pastors who are already already part of the choir. Uh, obviously, somebody who's politically correct and uh, doesn't really want to know what I'm saying, they don't invite me. Right. So, it, you know, what is a pastor? A pastor is a like a, a shepherd. Right. And the, the pastor is resp yeah, responsible for the congregants. And uh, so there are people who have checked me out. And, uh, you know, this church where I'm speaking tomorrow, Ecclesia, here in uh, off of Hefner, um, the pastor said to me, wow, you are very popular, very well known. We're very honored to have you in our church. Um, so there, there are about 20 churches in Oklahoma City that have, have had me. Right. But, but I don't have to tell you, there are hundreds of churches in Oklahoma City and, uh, and in Tulsa also. And thousands. So it, it, thousands. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. Last I counted, which was uh, almost a decade ago, there were 3,500. 3,500 around then churches in Tulsa alone. Did you know that? Yeah. I, I think that uh, one of the problems in churches, and definitely the problem in the Jewish synagogues, is that people do not want to have a uh, what they consider a negative message or a depressing message for the people. Uh, the, the, the rabbis and the pastors, uh, they want uh, happy, happy times are here again. And uh, <laughs> my, my message is a call to arms. And it'll sound funny. I'm a Jew from Israel, and I preach Christian revival. I, hey, who who would have thought? I mean, Mel Brooks would love you, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, my gosh. But I love your heart towards Christians in spite of the history that most Christians aren't even aware of. Most Christians aren't even aware that the writings of Martin Luther is, is what Hitler used as part of his playbook. People don't realize that. And, yeah. and, and yet, to see a Jewish brother love and embrace believers in, 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 in Jesus, but you're, you're Jewish, you're not a Christian, but to see you embrace and then to hear you say that, that uh, uh, as corrected by your wonderful wife, uh, that the Jews are, are the roots and the Christians are the branches, I believe is, is how you phrased it. And we are one tree. That's amazing to me. That's amazing. Anyone who attacks the roots attacks the branches, and anyone who attacks the branches attacks the roots. You know, when you talk about jihad of these churches, the ones that are brave enough to talk about the real issues, uh, not the ones in denial, um, do you ever bring up replacement theology, how that has been used not only by Hitler's Germany, not only by uh, mainstream churches in America to discount Israel? But it's also used in, in, in a, a, a degree by jihadists, too, the replacement theology. Um, Correct. You ever talk about that? Most Christians don't even know what, what replacement theology is. Well, obviously, I do speak about these things. Right. And indeed, uh, the Islamic approach, and I learned this from my wife, because my wife is from Egypt. She's not Muslim, but she knows how they think. Right. And, you know, they say, they say the Jews are the Saturday people, so kill them on Saturday. Right. And the Christians are the Sunday people, so right. kill them on Sunday. And that's my message in the churches. Uh, uh, Christians are not aware of the problem that is now growing in America. And I say today that there, where there were no Muslims in America in 1970, today there are almost 30 million. There's a lot of, lot of Egyptians that I love dearly. You know, we, we worked with the persecuted believers in, in Egypt. And um, uh, the first 28 people in over a thousand years allowed to openly do that under presidential protection because our leader was Trump's, one of his top picks for ambassador to Egypt. And so they wanted him to be alive and the Muslim Brotherhood was after us. Um, sure enough, they shot up a church that we were supposed to, to go one of those nights. Um, and we weren't there. Thankfully, no one was killed, but they were injured. But People really don't understand the threat. Uh, they, they think that covering their eyes and their mouth and their ears will make the problem go away. Uh, but that doesn't make the problem go away. And, you know, when you have a, a divided church that, that uh, doesn't like to come together because uh, so many of them are driven by money, 
Um, they don't want to lose congregants uh, because, you know, the, you, I've heard all the excuses. I've been in that world, every phase of that world. Um, but, you know, uh, it's interesting trying to get a lot of churches to come together until they have to. You know, the Chinese church is strong, but it's persecuted. And uh, I'm afraid we don't have any idea what per persecution is over here yet. Uh, I pray that by some miracle, people will open their eyes to the danger of jihad, to the fallacy of uh, uh, replacement theology, and to the necessity to come together. You know, we're, we're all being grouped together over here. First responders, police, veterans, conservatives, especially the white uh, demographic. And no one seems to be more hated than the black conservative. Uh, uh, but we might as well all come together, folks, because we're being grouped together. We're being targeted together. Um, is that too harsh to say to today's church in America, Avi? No, it's not harsh at all. It's simply reality. But some people, of course, don't want to hear reality. So what is the best way to support you? I know that you have a website, a nice website, by the way. Tell us the name of that, folks, at the bottom of your screen. The www.biblicalalliance.com. And I love that. Biblical Alliance. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go there while we're talking. Um, the last time I was there, uh, it was a very user-friendly site. And it has all your books on there, Avi. Um, books and some CDs, some DVDs. Uh, but also, I've, I've started putting a blog uh, or rather, my son is posting wow. the blog. I'm writing them and putting them on. And uh, eventually, my son's dream is that I will turn it all into a book. So well, if people follow my blog from the very beginning, it'll all be included later in a book. You know, people can can connect with your Facebook here. Um, I, I see a, a button for, well, there's a Bible block for the, for the Facebook as well. Um, yeah. Pretty, pretty amazing when people are discovering who you are, Jewish theologian, Israeli politician, renowned lecturer and author and analyst. You know, every time I've encountered you, Avi, and the first time I met you, I think it was in letter 2009, um, it was a delight to meet you. Of course, God's Learning Channel, GLC, uh, is so behind you. But I hope you don't mind that I, that I push some of these things and encourage people to, to get, um, I know that I'm going to do some buying too. But your you have your book Return to Mecca. It's right here on your website. Um, let let my people go so that they may circle me in the desert. Is what is what is the the subtext there? Um, what would you say about Return to Mecca? I have to tell you, the book Return to Mecca is actually popular in Saudi Arabia. Wow! And there wow. are Saudis who buy it, and then they, they they correspond with me. And you know what they say to me? They say to me, you are a Jew, you are an infidel, but you're a nice guy. So we like to talk to you. You, re you respect us. And I respect the Saudis. I respect uh, the Muslims. It uh, doesn't mean that, we're, we're, that we are allies because we're not really allies. Right. And, um, you know, my message in the church is that Allah, the moon God, the war God and the sword God is Satan. And not the God of the Jews and the Christians. The God of the Jews and the Christians is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So my teachings are Bible teachings. And then I show how the New Testament and the Old Testament work together. And how the Quran and the Hadith are the antithesis to the Judeo-Christian Bible. And that Allah, if he's a God who wants to kill all the Jews and Christians, that ain't God. That's the devil. And one of the names that they call their God, Allah, is he's the greatest of all the liars and deceivers. <laughs> and you know who, all the, who the greatest of all the liars and the deceivers is. That's Satan. Wow. And uh, when they say Allah Akbar, it means Allah is greater than God. That is not something that any Jew or Christian can tolerate. And, you know, one of my uh, great frustrations is that being born in America and raised in America, I was taught a lie that Islam, Judaism, and Christianity are the three great monotheistic religions. I said, that's not true. I say, Judaism and Christianity uh, are one religion. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, and that the Bible of the Jew and the Christian is one book, and that the Quran is a false book uh, for a false God, and that it was written by a rabbi and a priest. And I talk about that in my fifth book, 
Islam prophesied in Genesis. And the many pastors have read that book and say that, that is an important uh, textbook that should be in every church. You know, it's interesting. Um, the people do not want to be inconvenienced with the truth. And then they wonder what happened or they wonder where is God when they've been given so many warnings. You know, do you ever find when you converse with Muslims that, that they're not aware of what their own book or the Hadith says or not? Well, firstly, I have to tell you, uh, I try not to be inflammatory. Right. Uh, so that the Muslims, God forbid, may become violent with me. But my emphasis is not speaking to the Muslims. Right. My emphasis is speaking to the Christians and the Jews. Because the, the, the problem, first and foremost, is in our home. In other words, the Jewish Christian home. Uh, and the Muslims, uh, it's very hard to get through to them. The people who are getting through to the Muslims are the Christians. Right. And I praise God for that. And I always say, you know, bring them to the Lord or they'll bring it to the sword. Wow. Because their God is the sword. Well, that goes along with one of your books, uh, Christian Revival for Israel Survival. Uh, what would you say about that? Well, that book is very important because it explains how the Jewish population is shrinking in America and the Muslim population is growing. In other words, you've got 6 million Jews in America and you've got 30 million Muslims in America. All this is in the last 50 years and trillions of dollars have been spent by the Islamic world to missionize America for Islam. And they're succeeding. And again, because the American public, including the Jews, are numbed down by all this massive infusion of cash from the Islamic world. When I was reporting for Act for America in 2010, we noticed that there were thousands uh, of Muslim religious leaders moving, well, millions, it's safe to say, but but we noticed then thousands <clears throat> to America and buying a home with, with uh, Saudi money or uh, Iranian money, depends on which, you know, Sunni or Shia, or, and then immediately applying for 501c3 status and then re renovating that home into a mosque. People didn't yeah. know that. They didn't believe us yeah. then. I wonder if they believe us now. But all that to say is the, the threat is real. Um, I don't consider someone of a different faith, uh, faith a threat. Unless they're devout in a faith that teaches that is a Jesus, the prophet that did not die, according to them, will one day return with the Mahdi and uh, their, you know, Muhammad himself, some would say, or, or their, uh, some would say they're Antichrist, some would say they're Messiah, uh, you know, I know that's a Jewish term, and slay the people of Saturday and slay the people of Sunday. If you're developing Correct. that belief and you have unlimited Absolutely. amounts of money. And I wanted to add something else. My wife, Rachel, was an intelligence gatherer for the Israeli government. Right. And 40 years ago, when she first started working in the radio, she heard Saudi broadcasts, which were saying, even if it takes us 100 years, we will make America a Muslim country through immigration. Oh, yeah. And then 10 years ago, they changed that and said we were wrong about 150 years, it's only going to take us another 30 years and America will be a Muslim country. And meanwhile, the churches and the synagogues are asleep. Well, you know, Obama was busing in 1,200 Muslims every single night into St. Louis and then taking them to Omar's district. And that gave us Omar, you know. You know, people don't want to believe me because uh, Obama's half black. He's, he's white around the whites, but he's black around the blacks. And uh, they don't they don't want to believe that he was an Indonesian student. They don't want to believe that some would say Harvard gave Harvard was given thirty million dollars for a, a affirmative action student. They don't want to believe any of that. La 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 conspiracy conspiracy. When the evidence is staring you in the face by yeah. millions of not just Muslims but Somali. Now we we were at war with them. And uh, very strategic. And now under Obama's third term, like it or not, folks, you know, I'm, I'm not a blind Trumpster either. Uh, but hey, you know, you judge a, someone famous once said you judge a tree by its fruit. Well, if the fruit is uh, uh, record high employment and 
and um, prosperity and, you know, uh, true justice and a, a president of law and order was fruit. Well, then Trump was a great president. If inflation and corruption and untold billions. How many more billions are we going to send to Ukraine, you know, uh, in that to get involved? Do we really want to go with, to war with Russia and China? Well, some do, you know. Uh, the same people that only want 500 million people on the earth are the same people that. Yeah. Absolutely. By the way, I wanted to mention something. Uh, I don't think I brought it up in past shows, but uh, if you ever check the coins in your pocket, uh, the quarters, have you seen the new quarter? The ones that are facing away from In God that, that, We yeah, Trust? Washington <laughs> is turning his back on In God We Trust. Uh -huh. yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, we have this in, Biden inflation in America, because, uh, you know, if you turn your back on God, God's going to turn his back on you. That's how it usually works. And uh, but the new quarters are are uh, uh, a defilement. It's terrible. I, I mean, may God forbid those people who uh, initiated this and are now putting into circulation quarters with George Washington turning his back on the in God we trust. You know, it, it amazes me. It's like the Roman Empire, you know, take away the rights, but give them bread and provide a circus, right? Um, you know, when something is important to you, nothing will stop you. And if something's not really that important to you, any excuse will stop you. We had over 34 million uh, evangelicals not even vote. And um, the reality is, folks, we got to do something. And one of the things you can do uh, is to... Lock shields with Avi Lipkin and his efforts. He's fighting the same battle over there in Israel uh, as a lot of us are fighting here. Uh, I think it's safe to say you're fighting on a lot of our behalfs, Avi, and bringing truth to people who finally are coming around to receiving it. So I don't know if there's a place on your website where you can see your, your speaking engagements. I don't know if you want to put that on there or not. but No, I don't. But I, I know that on your website, lots of good books, CDs, DVDs uh, from biblical archaeology um, to much, much more to commentary and, and get educated, but also put some put some fundage towards Avi Lipkin with uh, BiblicalAlliance.com. Go there today, buy something and get behind Avi Lipkin. I'm so happy to see your face again, my friend. Likewise, likewise. I'll be in the States another four weeks, God willing. And well, so I hope he we return to our weekly format we will my friend and uh, we're going to stay connected because as goes israel so goes the world we'll see you soon avi amen see you hey friends this is brand you know years ago i discovered a secret that enabled me to navigate this reality to live a fearless life free from anxiety where nothing was impossible for me that's how i live and that's what i want for you if you want to have a fearless life, free of anxiety, to live in joy and success and fulfillment, walking out your destiny and living out your purpose, you got a better chance of doing that if you read The Red Pill Prophet on Amazon.com.